गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबॉडी एम आई ऑडिबल यस यस यू आर ऑडिबल यू कैन स्टार्ट नाउ ओके थैंक यू गुड मॉर्निंग वंस अगेन टू एवरीबॉडी आई एम वेरी हैप्पी टू अनाउंस दैट इन आवर पीएचडी वेबिनार सीरीज टुडे वी आर हैविंग आवर 18th स्पीकर डॉक्टर बीच एंड बिफोर वी स्टार्ट द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द स्पीकर I would like to mention uh, Dr. Deshmukh uh, sir's continuous support and enthusiasm. I uh, welcome Dr. Sir, our India president, to speak few words. Uh, thank you, thank you, Jay. I'm really very happy. In India, there are many young scientists. Did. work did work in microbiology and biotechnology so uh, i am very happy to inspire the young generation and to give platform to young speakers of india and uh, i appreciate bindu ma'am also because these speakers are coming forward and putting their research in front of the many indian stalwarts this lecture is uh, being recorded and youtube will be available from tomorrow thank you your efforts jai sir thank you thank you thank you sir uh, dr bindu nayak is currently working as assistant professor a graphic at a university at department of life sciences ma'am has done her phd from banaras hindu university in 2020 dr bindu has done her mtech at sambalpur university and ma'am has done her msc for barhampur university and ma'am has done her bsc from the very same sambalpur university dr bindu has published more than 24 national and international uh, peer reviewed research papers in reputed journals and uh, one more thing i would like to mention in our phd webinar series we are giving memento and certificate to every speaker and this speaker, this series is for the inspiring the youth today i welcome our today speaker dr bindu nayak thank you jay sir uh, a very warm uh, good morning to all um, thank working as assistant professor in the department of life sciences graphic era dean to the university dehradun uttarakhand today i am uh, presenting my phd work what um, j sir has already uh, told that uh, i have done my phd from uh, institute of agricultural sciences banaras hindu university varanasi on topic production purification characterization and scale up of pollinators using agro based waste um uh, dr uh, sk goel and dr ed tripathi were uh, my super uh, uh, were supervised me during my whole phd work let's start with the introduction as everybody knows that what are enzyme and what are their work actually and why they are used uh, as enzymes are biocatalyst and they work to uh, increase the rate of reaction by reducing the activation energy and uh, our um, used from ancient time for making of different types of beverages mainly wine beer and other uh, uh, things like bread uh, vinegar and this the enzymes are significantly used in this processing industries because they help in transforming the raw material into improved quality based nutritious and safe food products now comes to the pollinates pollinates is actually an d branching enzyme which belongs to the 13 glycosyl hydrolase also known as alpha amylase family they uh, they mainly hydrolyze the gly glycosidic bonds in starch and pollulan like polysaccharides and uh, glycogen like polysaccharides to uh, to give glucose maltose and maltotriose uh, syrup which are usually used in food and beverage industries as well as in pharmaceutical industries 
Pulinase is not a single enzyme. It is actually a group of enzymes which comprises of five different types of enzymes: type one, type two, type one pulinase, type two pulinase, neopulinase, isopulinase, and purulan hydrolase type three. Uh, type one pulinase has the ability to hydrolyze one six alpha D glucosidic bonds to hydrolyze the respective uh, substrate to yield maltotriose from pulinase. and linear, linear oligosaccharides actually these enzymes are classified on the basis of the types of substrate on which they act and the after acting on that substrate what type of the products they actually produce on that basis these pulinases are categorized into five different types so type 1 has the ability the in type 1 pulinase is also known as true true pulinase also because it has ability to hydrolyze only pululan and the uh, alpha 16 bond in pululan uh, to uh, to produce the maltotriose however in type 2 pulinase which is also known as amylopulinase it act on alpha 16 linkage to produce maltotriose and it has the ability to hydrolyze pululan as well as starch also and it produce maltotriose glucose maltose as the product and in new new pulinase which is also known as type 1 pululan hydrolase has the ability to uh, is also known as pululan 4d glucono hydrolase and has the ability to hydrolyze one full bond to yield panose as the product from substrate pululan like this isopulinase which is also known as type 2 pululan hydrolase it acts on alpha 14 d glucosidic linkage of the substrate and produce isopanose as the product it has it has not the ability to hydrolyze the starch type 2 group of enzymes are mainly reported from fungi and are not from the Uh, not till not reported from the bacteria but still works are going on maybe uh, it it will on future pululan hydrolase type 3 also has the ability to hydrolyze pululan by acting on 14 glucosidic bond as well as 16 glucosidic linkage which is more most more preferable actually and when one a, a single enzyme have the ability to hydrolyze both alpha 14 as well as alpha 16 glycosidic linkage in polysaccharides like starch or in pululan to give different Mm, products like um, reducing sugar. The constant associated with this work are um, generally uh, there are very less reports are there uh, from uh, uh, on production of pulinase from wild strain, and uh, uh, due to the spe uh, specificities like um, having the ability to degrade alpha one four and alpha one six glucosidic bond, it it, it has uh, it demands its improved. with time in different industries like pharma and food processing industries usually in nutris and as well as in nutraceutical industries and uh, it uh, the another constant associated with this work is that uh, it has very less report from wild strain because wild strain has very less ability to give a good yield that's why Uh, we focused on endophytic endophytic fungi uh, to um, produce a cost effective pulinase and uh, it uh, the high production cost and low yield are the major limitations with these enzymes that's why most of the pulinase that are produced and uh, used uh, in industrially are uh, produced by cloning of bacillus usually so we have targeted the endophytic fungi as well as uh, fungi because to we want to reduce the uh, cost of production also so um, by using the agro waste we uh, for the for the medium fermentation medium formulation so can we reduce the um, production cost the objective of this work is um, the screening of potential pulinase producing endophytic fungi and optimization of their physical and cultural variables that affect the pulinase yield using uh, using statistical tools like we we had used the design expert um, software to uh, to use the designs like placket berman for the screening of nutrients and uh, physical uh, and cultural parameters uh, followed by the placket berman design the scale up of enzyme production in a small scale bioreactor under optimized condition but we have uh, actually in this work we have compared the both solid state fermentation as well as the submerged state fermentation and we had a um, good yield in um, solid state so that we can easily use the agro waste as well as we go for the its scale up in 
in trays and in conical flasks for the scale up. Um, then purification and characterization of the produced enzyme and its application in fruit juice clarification. As I have already discussed that what is actually pollinase and it has very less report from the um, fungi and um, uh, it has the major limitations associated with the it is that uh, um, less yield and uh, mostly produced from the clone clone organisms like bacillus and it, it is belongs to the GH13 or alpha amylase family. I have already discussed this. Um, the types of pollinage also I have discussed. These are the sources of um, uh, uh, pollinage from different organisms, uh, what I had reviewed. Now let's come to the my work plan. Um, the, uh, uh, I have already told that uh, we have targeted the endoph endophytic uh, fungi. So we have targeted the three different plants to isolate their endophytic uh, fungi. And uh, all the plants, uh, um, two plants are, uh, that is uh, Tradesinia pallida and uh, Trifolium is uh, the ornamental plants. Uh, which are uh, we can find in our um, garden and uh, another plant we have targeted is G maize and we have isolates the endophytic fungi from these three different plants and target the organisms which have and screen the organisms uh, having the uh, promising ability to produce pululunage by using pululan agar media to screen that the uh, the which of the fungi actually first we have isolated the fungi then we screen them that which of the which of the organism has best ability to produce a good yield of pululunage then identify, uh, we have characterized and identified that uh, organisms for, for their, um, by using polyphagic taxonomy. Uh, we, have, um, biochem we have done their biochemical characterization as well as uh, molecular and uh, morphological um, characterization to characterize the, those organisms. Then we uh, have used some, we have selected, selected some agro waste um, for solid state fermentation. Um, to produce uh, the pollinase, then uh, we optimize their physical and uh, cultural parameters to have the optimum condition for a good uh, yield of pollinase. Uh, so uh, the nutrient uh, later on, I will discuss uh, the detail about the production and the optimization. The op then optimization of the physical uh, factors by box bank and design like we have optimized for the um, parameters like temperature, moisture, and spore concentration to have a good yield. Then um, validation of the model was conducted. So this is the isolation and screening of the endophytes. As I have already discussed that we have targeted these three different plants to isolate the um, fungi. And uh, we have screened them on the basis of the having a good yield to produce, having the ability to give a good yield of pollinage. Then we have characterized these organisms by um, on the basis of phenotypic and genotypic identification and characterization method. And um, we have validated the model. Um, first, the physical parameters, as I have discussed, that we have uh, focused the temperature, moisture, and inoculum size to optimize uh, which of the which of from uh, among the three different parameters, which parameters most influence um, the by box bank on design, and we have uh, screened the nine uh, different uh, nutrients for the optimum production of pollinase. And these are the different nutrients what we have actually chosen uh, to um, screen the most effective nutrient and that affect the um, yield of pollinase. And uh, therefore, to find that which among, among these nutrients, which most affect the yield of pollinase. So we take these nutrients and uh, up, um, screen them by using placket Berman design. Actually, placket Berman design is, is a design which helps uh, in uh, screening of the nutrients or any, uh, any um, parameters that uh, most affect uh, its uh, yield. So from among these um, 16 to 19 different nutrients, Three we had that three nutrients most affect 
Hello, Bindu, ma'am. <clears throat> I think uh, there is some connection issue. Hello. Am uh, I yes, audible? now you are fine. Yes, please continue. Now you are fine. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is the more uh, the this half normal plant actually so uh, which of the nutrients that most affect the yield of the colonies so the, these are the nutrients like uh, uh, magnesium sulfate magnesium sulfate yeast extract uh, peptone and um, peptone most affect the yield of the colonies uh, and after this these three uh, mo uh, the most promising three nutrients were taken for further optimization by using plaquette bourbon design Just uh, so this is the process, the procedure by which we have characterized our organisms, and these are the different parameters we what we have actually taken for um, taken in consideration for the optimization for a, having a good yield. These are the different uh, runs actually that comes when we. Uh, put these amount in, uh, and parameters in softwares like design expert for this is the black airborne design what we have used for the optimization of the physical parameters and uh, this paper uh, was published in um, uh, bioresource technology reports actually and uh, these parameters were taken further for the um, scale up of the for the production of pulunis then we go for its purification. In purification, ammonium sulfate precipitation is mostly used, but in case of mine, I have used the acetone precipitation um, uh, for the isolation of the produced enzymes, then go for the dialysis, then its purification by using ion exchange chromatography by using DAE, and then further uh, purification by Cephalex G100 to improve its uh, uh, specific activity. Uh, and after purification, we had actually observed that uh, on purification, the specific activity of the enzymes is increases uh, with many folds. Then uh, the enzyme, the produced enzyme was characterized for its uh, best pH, uh, the means the optimum pH at which it gives highest uh, um, activity and, uh, the met and for the metal ions. Um, and then we go for the kinetic analysis as we have the enzymes that have the ability to hydrolyze starch as well as pulan, as well as amylose also. So we have um, the kinetic analysis for all these three substrate to have the maximum um, means kinetic parameters. Then we have uh, done uh, thin air chromatography uh, to observe that what type of the different um, different products after hydrolysis, what are the different products it gives. Then uh, we uh, determine the molecular weight of the en produced enzyme by SDS page and uh, effect of uh, pool niche on starch and pululan. Uh, by hydrolyzing this uh, this uh, substrate then the the produced enzyme is further used for the clarification of juice and this is the first time we have uh, attempted the to use the pulunish to observe uh, whether it is um, able to or it it will helpful in clarification of, of food juice or not but it is successfully we achieved that pulunish is uh, uh, pulunish helps in clarification of the different food juices like apple mango and mosambi we have taken three different juices um, and uh, as uh, the enzymes uh, we have produced is in very less amount so we have entrapped it and immobilized in it uh, in sodium alginate uh, and uh, we so that we can use it repeatedly and uh, it, we have successfully used these enzymes repeatedly for the clarification of juice and further after clarification the quality parameters for the juice has also recorded like um, on the basis of total phenol ascorbic acid content and uh, we have measured its color color parameters and clarity and we have measured its viscosity also 
all the parameters were statistically analyzed by, by using SPSS as well as by using design export. This is a, um, a graphical, um, and graphically, I have tried to show my work, how I have um, done my work. That is, we have isolated the fungi from uh, ornamental plants, and then we have screened for the pollinage producing ability of these enzymes. Then we go for the solid state fermentation of that specific enzymes. Then we have isolated that enzymes and characterized um, for its molecular weight by using SDS space. And uh, on the same way, we have. Um, in the at the sense we have characterized the isolated fungi for its uh, um, that when, uh, at which position actually it will be there by polyphagic taxonomy my first my first objective is screening of the potential plumage producing microorganisms and optimization of physical and cultural variables that are affecting the plumage yield using appropriate appropriate statistical tools so i have already a little bit uh, discussed that these three different plants we have taken for the um, isolation of the endophytic fungi from them and we have isolated uh, these um, we have targeted like a different part of that specific plant and that like stem, leaf, fruit. And from that, the total number of colonies we obtained is um, like in, um, in trust discansia plant, we have um, from stem, we have 53 different types of colonies. And on the basis of the, uh, the morphotypes, we have selected the 19 one because morphotypes means the similar types of colonies we actually excluded and the unique type of colonies we uh, considered it for further work. And from LEAP, we have 27 uh, uh, total number of colonies from which we have taken 13 uh, different um, colonies on the basis of morphotypes and like this from other plants also from different different part, different different parts different uh, number of colonies are there and on the basis of morphotypes we have selected some specific type of colonies for further work this is the preliminary screening for the um, polysaccharide hydrolyzing activity means mainly pulmulan hydrolyzing activity we have screened these uh, these uh, organisms uh, not only on the basis of pulmulan we have taken also starch also that whether it has ability to hydrolyze the starch or not as well as like pulmulan so on that basis we have uh, given the marks like uh, triple star uh, triple positive sign for having an, an excellent producing ability and one plus for uh, weak producing ability and uh, uh, two plus for good producing ability to these different organisms. These are the um, colonies actually the um, these these are one is uh, like uh, penicillium and another is the aspergillus actually what actually uh, after molecular um, characterization what we have and uh, these are some colonies of that specific organisms and their ability to hydrolyze the starch and pululan and we named these organisms as bhu25 and bhu30 bhu46 um, uh, like this these are on the basis of morphology, same, pic, same picture of the spore chain to characterize this organism on the basis of its morph morphology. These are the scanning electron microscopic pick of the spore chain, as well as uh, one is for compound microscope. These are the same pick. These are the uh, morphology. This is the aspergillus uh, species that uh, we have uh, named it at B246. And this is the pen penicillin species, sport chain, uh, which we named as B225. These are these um, phylogenetic tree, tree for uh, the um, molecular, after molecular characterization, we have these phylogenetic trees for these organisms. We have selected select some of the some agro waste for the production of pulurnis, like uh, um, for the solid state fermentation and summer fermentation. The, the this type of bar shows the about the BH25 solid state fermentation, and uh, this type of uh, 
the line graph shows the bh 46 uh, submerged and uh, solid state fermentation and these bar shows the bh 46 solid state fermentation so according to this we have taken the wheat bran rice bran um, this is sugar can bagasses uh, orange peels mosambi peels and banana peels we have uh, selected these uh, or taken these uh, agro waste for the production of pulmonage in this we have um we have um seen the the time span at which time the yield of pulmonic is maximum and it is around the third day that is around the 72 hours is uh, uh, at the 72 hours it gives a maximum yield of the pulmonic and uh, it is the effect of uh, moisture content we have uh, seen uh, at uh, the 70 70 percent moisture content is best for the uh, for having a good activity means a maximum yield of the pulmonic the yield was uh, measured on the basis of um, activity and this is the temperature one variable at a time actually the, we have optimized this condition by taking one variable at a time then we have taken a, a range for placket bourbon design so here in 30 30 degrees celsius is best for the having a good yield of pulmonic And on the basis of inoculum size, uh, the uh, seven, uh, seven log spores uh, per gram dry, ba dry base waste, uh, it gives at seven uh, uh, log uh, means uh, CFUs of um, this uh, uh, spore is sufficient to have the greater yield of the pollinates and like this on ph uh, 6 to 6.5 is the best for the production of this enzyme then this is the summary for the physical uh, factors that we have selected for optimization using box bank on design and these parameters we obtained from the one variable at a time from last week i have discussed this is the basic level for 70 and variation level is 22 the value factor is 60 because in plaque uh, in plaque Burman, it takes three variable one highest one minimum and one the medium factor so the highest is 72 and uh, lowest is 68 and the medium is the 70 like this in, in case of temperature the basic level is 27 so we have taken the variable of 2.5 so we have the minimum uh, range is 25 maximum is 30 and the medium is 20 like that for spores it is uh, in log it is 6.5 and the variation level is 1 so 5.5 is the minimum and 7.5 is the maximum and 6.5 is the medium and this is the uh, the runs actually that comes up now when we apply the box bank on design for optimization of the physical parameters um, and uh, this is the actual value of the enzyme activity what is there uh, what we when we go for trial all these trials we have this value uh, this amount of enzyme activity on gram, gram dry substrate basis and the predicted value is this and it is uh, the actual value and the, the predicted value is uh, most of the times nearer uh, so, so a little bit like uh, where it is 187 is the actual value it is the predicted value is 189.75 so it is like here, here it is uh, 230 is the actual value in this run and uh, in case of predicted value it is 27 from this we have uh, in this 14 trial and 14 seven run seven run we have uh, 28.5 degrees celsius at 28.5 degrees celsius and 70 percent and the spore concentration is 6.5 log value at that time we have the maximum uh, actual value of enzyme activity this is 398 which is the predicted value is 394 so this is the we have taken this run and this um, com this uh, composition of uh, physical parameters uh, to go for the further scale up and in uh, ninth run it is also same like this where it gives 391 
um, the actual value and 394 is the predicted value. So this is the, uh, the uh, nearer, like uh, in one run we have 398 and in one run it is 319, although the com combination is same. But uh, as whenever we go for the practical work, a little bit difference is there, so it is there. So this is all about the physical parameters optimization by one variable at a time, as well as in box bank and design. Then further, we have taken um, for the nutrient optimization. In case of nutrient optimization, we have taken this condition for the further optimization. This is the regression uh, coefficient and statistical significance for the quadratic model. This is comes from that uh, uh, whenever we uh, go for um, in design expert, we go for the box bank on design. So at that time we have this model also. And these uh, these are the different graphs that it in this design gives to show how the moisture and temperature combinedly affect the activity of the enzyme. So uh, when the moisture and uh, the moisture, I have already discussed the 72 degree, uh, 72, 70% 70 moisture is best uh, and the uh, 28.5 uh, degree Celsius temperature is best for having a optimum production of enzyme activity. Like that, the spores of seven, seven log and the temperature is 28.5 gives a maximum yield of the enzyme. And like this, uh, the 70% moisture and spores influence the, uh, gives the maximum yield of the enzyme. Then we go for the, after optimization of the physical parameters, we go for the optimization of the nutrients in which we have taken uh, the, we have used the plaquette Bormann design to screen uh, the different nutrients uh, for a, a optimum production of pulunis. Uh, so it gives uh, the nine, run nine, uh, in which uh, like one minus one, actually in plaquette Bormann design, there are three variables like maximum minimum and medium and in case of plaque environment two are there one is maximum and one is main, minimum so for every nutrients we have taken one minimum and one maximum value uh, like one shows the maximum and minus one shows the minimum uh, the and for every nutrient the maximum and minimum mm, uh, minimum value were chosen from the literature that uh, for like this um, for ammonium sulfate, what should be the maximum and what should be the minimum value it has, it has taken from the literature and from that it gives that from this half normal plot we have these are the different nutrients these this and these are the different nutrients uh, the uh, these fives are the different nutrients which uh, which most affect the yield of the pulunis as compared to the 19 different nutrients. So we have taken these five nutrients further for the optimization. So the value for the, the maximum and mi minimum value is like that um, for, um, for run five, it gives the maximum yield of pulunis that is predicted and the actual volume from, uh, value from we have from five run we have the maximum uh, yield of pulunis that is in this run the uh, potassium phosphate is uh, 0 0.5 gram and yeast extract 0 0.5 means on the basis of percent 0 0.5 percent uh, and uh, yeast extract 0.5 percent, peptone 0.25 percent, and MnSO4 0.075 percent. And the, in 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 this combination, it gives a yield of enzymes that is 648 to 640. Means the actual value is 648. What we have after production, and the predicted value was 644. Like this in 25 run also, uh, it gives a yield of 640. And six uh, at the actual value and six thirty two is the predicted value. So the ANOVA for the important nutrients responsible for pulmonic yield in solid state fermentation are are the significant uh, link that affect for like uh, the peptone 
it is uh, the value is 28.80 and for each structure and like this it shows the it is the ANOVA table uh, what we obtained from the new for op, uh, nutrient optimization and this is the regression table regression coefficient table and these are the figures that shows how um, the different combination of nutrient affect the yield of the enzymes like uh, yeast extract against KH2PO4 and peptone against KH2PO4 and peptone against yeast extract and MnSO4 and K K2 and K KH2PO4 how they affect the enzyme activity. And this is for the MnSO4 and yeast extract how I affect the yield of enzymes and the MnSO4 and peptone. The modern validation and confirmation shows that validation has been performed under condition predicted by the model. The optimum level for each variable were 0.50% of KH2PO4 and 0.50% of yeast extract, 0.25% of peptone and 0.075% of MnSO4 supplemented in substrate wheat bran. Wheat bran is the, the agro waste uh, what we have taken. No, actually, from different, I have was I have already shown that graph uh, from different um, agro waste. The wheat bran shows that it gives a maximum yield. So, for further optimization and scale up, we have taken this uh, wheat bran along with the other nutrients for scale up. The predicted pollinage yield produced by means of the above optimum medium components concentration. 644.45 unit for gram dry substrate. The additional triplicate test with the optimized medium were conducted to validate the prediction of the model. The maximum pollinage activity of 648.0 unit, uh, unit per gram dry substrate was achieved in the present study. The validity, of, uh, the validity and the existence of the optimal point were confirmed through the predicted and experimented value. There was an overall increase in the yield of 9.914 uh, and uh, this was calculated from without optimization that we have taken during the one variable at a time at that time, whatever the yield at that time it comes and whatever the yield comes after a proper optimization by using black and Berman design and um, and box bank on design, what yield it comes, we have divided that one and the how many folds increase yield of pollinage we obtained was reported that is 9.91 fold. The objective, uh, so this, this was the my first objective where I have um, isolated the organisms, characterized the organisms, then used them for uh, optimized the conditions first to one variable at a time by one variable at a time to obtain the opti uh, optimized range and after that by using design experts like different designs like uh, plaquet burman box banker and plaquet burman design to optimize the both cultural and physical parameters to have the optimum yield my second objective is to scale up of the enzyme production in small scale scale up of the enzyme production in a small scale bioreactor under optimized condition. Purification and characterization of the produced en uh, enzyme and its application in full juice clarification. My second and third objective was there. So as I have already discussed that the scale up of the enzyme production, you know, uh, we have uh, decided to uh, do in a small scale bioreactor, but it was uh, um, comes better in solid state fermentation. So we have to go for the uh, tray, uh, like in tray solid state fermentation or in um, like five liter and one liter conical flask. And we have optimized in um, incubator. Then the produced enzyme was purified and characterized for its different um, properties and the produced enzyme was applied in juice clarification. So the, uh, the top scale uh, to scale up the to 
scale of the Polish production of Aspergillus species BH46 culture was grown in conical flasks ranging from 500 to 5000 ml capacity containing 10 to 100 gram dry substrate in and in all the flasks almost the same Polish amount have been produced that is around 647.00 oh, unit per gram dry substrate the, uh, suggesting that the production of pulmonage can radially be scaled up under optimized condition. Then we go for the purification of pulmonage. First, we have precipitated or concentrated the um, produced enzyme by acetone precipitation method and the crude extract having the volume of um, 1000 ml gives a protein of 9, 988 mg having the total activity of 64,700 and uh, having a specific activity of 65.48 with that is given uh, the 100% yield uh, with the purification hole of one times. Then after uh, acetone precipitation gives 80 ml of enzyme uh, with a total protein of 370 mg and having a total activity of 44,500 unit. Uh -huh. This is called total activity and having a specific activity of 120.27 with that is a yield of 68.77 and having a purification fold of 1.83. After DAE cellulose purification, uh, the volume is 50 and the total of protein is 47 mg with a total activity of 23,570, with a specific activity of 501.48 and a yield of 38.42 and having a purification fold of 7.65. When you go for the Cephadex G100 purific uh, purification by using Cephadex G100, we have uh, the volume of 10 ml and uh, the total protein is 5 mg with a total activity of 3,261 and a specific activity of 652.2 unit per milligram and the yield of 5.04 and with a purification fold of 9.96. H with the enzyme is purified by step by step, its specific activity increases gradually. It's so uh, this most this graph shows the characterization of the pollinage for its optimum pH. Um, uh, the the enzyme that produce has two different pH. One is acidic pH and one is alkaline pH. Uh, have um, that shows the ma maximum activity of the enzymes. And uh, on effect the effect of temperature, it gives um. A, that, so further we have optimized for two different pH actually as we have the um, first optimized the means uh, optimized for the pH at the time we see we have two different pH so for, for temperature also we have we have tried for two different um, pH the red color uh, line shows the for the optimum temperature for at pH 10 and the black color line shows the optimum pH at 6.5. So the optimum pH uh, is around 55 for um, at 6.5 pH and it is around 60, 60 for pH 10. The relative activity, uh, uh, when we plot the metal, we go for the metal ions, the the it uh, these enzymes shows a good activity at uh, with silver metal and like like this the activity is same uh, it is i think same graph is there then we go for the kinetic analysis for the determination of um, km and vmax value for the different substrate like pululan, amylopectin and starch. The, in case of pululan, the enzyme shows that 0.563 mg per ml and Vmax value is 181.81 micromolar per mg per minute. 
and for amylopectin it is the km is 1.142 mg per ml and um, the bmax is 238.90 micromolar for uh, micromolar per milligram per minute and for starch the km value is 0 0.65 m milligram per ml and the bmax is um, maximum velocity is 60.60 micromolar per uh, milligram per minute And this is the um, TLC we have done for to determine what type of different uh, products uh, it produces after hydrolyzing the pululan and starch. So it gives that the glucose on hydrolysis of the substrate, it gives glucose, maltotriose, maltose, uh, like, uh, maltose as the product. This is the end. This the fourth is the starch without enzyme. The first is the pululan. After hydrolyzing the pululan, it gives the um, maltotriose. Just a minute. Let me to connect to the charge. Then we have applied the same enzyme and uh, to we have go for the same analysis, uh, scanning electron microscopic analysis to observe that whether the enzyme is act on the substrate to have to for the confirmation actually um, because the uh, TLC already confirmed that it it is it, it acts on the uh, substrate the enzyme the produced enzyme is act on the substrate and it gives the different types of product and after that for further confirmation we have applied the immobilized enzyme to hydrolyze the different substrate and uh, uh, and uh, take the um, scanning electron microscopy uh, images uh, to observe the enzyme is axed on the substrate. It shows that it, um, before treatment, the substrate shows, shows a very smooth surface. However, after treatment, the same substrate have the rough surface. It uh, confirms that the enzymes act on the substrate and hydrolyze them. Then we have um, immobilized the produced enzyme by using sodium alginate. And uh, first we have uh, optimized the concentration of sodium alginate to, to immobilize the enzymes that which, which concentration of sodium alginate gives a better uh, immobilization of the enzymes so that we can use it repeatedly and um, it you know, which gives a better mass transfer so that the enzymes can act on the substrate properly. So 1.0% weight per volume of the sodium alginate gives a better mass transfer of the enzymes to have a better yield. Then the optimized condition for the treatment of the juice. We have taken three different juice like mango, apple, and mosambi juice. For the different types of juice, actually the uh, edge, uh, enzymes are very specific towards the conditions we applied. So uh, all the juice have different uh, properties and different pH as well and different viscosity also. So on that basis, therefore, we have optimized the better condition for that three different types of juice that which condition is better for their treatment. So the enzyme concentration of the better like uh, for 5 ml juice, the 35 beads we have taken and the incubation temperature we have taken is 45 degrees Celsius. And the time is 90 minutes it takes for a better clarification uh, in uh, like that for apple also 20 beats is enough for 5 ml and, and it gives um, uh, in this case also we have uh, taken the 45 degrees celsius because the, we prefer to go for the minimum temperature of incubation uh, which uh, which um, which is better for having a good quality of juice that's why you go otherwise 55 and 60 is the best um, where it shows a optimum activity, but for the treatment of the juice, the minimum temperature is better. So we have taken 45 and the time it takes 90 minutes. And for in case of Mosambi, 
um, we have taken less incubation temperature 40 was the optimized uh, temperature and beat um, beat 13, 15 beats for high mammal and it takes only 60 minutes for the clarification and mosambi juice uh, is uh, well clarified as compared to mango and apple and we think that due to the density maybe and viscosity of uh, more viscosity of these two, two, two different juice mosambi has less viscous so it is more effective and i think mass transfer is better that's why it gives a very better clarification in case of Mosambi juice. Then this is, uh, we have shown the different parameters uh, like for the uh, enzyme concentration means effect of enzyme concentration on the yield clarity and reducing sugar. Actually, we saw that uh, how effective this enzyme is for the clarification of juice that is on the basis of yield clarity and the amount of reducing sugar increase after clarification so this graph shows that um, the enzyme concentration for beads for 5 ml this is um, what we from after this optimization after this optimization actually we have this table on the basis of clarification yield and all this comparison we have this table that we temperature which temperature how much of the enzyme and the time is better for having a clarity and reducing sugar. So, uh, so this is the effect of incubation time uh, on yield clarity and reducing sugar of different juice. These are the physical chemical characteristic of non-clarified juice in comparison with the clarified juice. This is the control means the non-clarified one and this is the test, the clarified one. So um, the TSS as we can see there the TSS is increases in all cases. The TSS is increases with the after incubation like that the titrable acidity has not of so, um, so uh, much of significant uh, effect on titrable acidity. And the, the, the reducing sugar, amount of reducing sugar uh, is increases after incubation in all the all cases. And the ascorbic acid content is also increases in test as compared to the control. But in some cases, it is reduces in Mosambi. In case of Mosambi, it is reduced. Um, but in other cases, it is increases. The total phenol content which also increases after after treatment after enzymatic treatment and the color color parameters it uh, the lab are the different hues that uh, that uh, gives the color parameters information about the different color parameters like yellowness uh, redness and whiteness on the basis of redness whiteness and yellowness and the yield of the which is important like yield and clarity the yield of the juice uh, is increases significantly in all cases and the clarity of the juice is also increases the clarity is uh, we have determined the clarity on the basis of transmittance Now comes we come comes to the summary and conclusion. The finding of the present studies can be concluded like the end of, in the endophytic still the endophytic fungi are not explored for their uh, niche producing ability. We have explored the endophytic fungi for their uh, niche producing ability, and uh, and it proves that endophytic fungi are rich source of enzymes of industrial importance. This is the first report of niche type two from aspergillus flavus from five different enzymes. The enzymes that our organism aspergillus flavus that is BHO forty six produce is the type two type niche which gave a highest yield in solid state fermentation by using wheat bran agro-based waste. After statistical optimization, the physical parameters and nutrient components, there was an improved yield by 9.91 9 fold relative to that obtained from an unoptimized physical parameters. Hence, agro-based waste are an excellent substrate for solid state fermentation process. 
and the pollution is purified with 9.96 fold with overall yield of 5.04 percent and a specific activity of 652.2 unit per milligram of protein the present enzyme has a molecular weight of 135 kilo dalton maximum activity of the ph value uh, maximum activity at ph value 6.5 and 10 at temperature of 50 degree celsius the presence of iron and silver ions increase the pollinage activity while copper potassium magnesium sodium and calcium have inhibitory effect the uh, the kinetics parameters like Km and Vmax for pululan is 0.563 milligram per ml and 181.818 micromolar per mg per minute by line over work plot. Similarly, the kinetics analysis revealed that the Km and Vmax for the starch is 1.142 milligram per ml and 238.09 micromolar per milligram per minute while that of amylopectin it is 0.654 mg per milligram per ml and 60.60 micromolar per mg per minute these findings indicate that the present pulmonies is different from the previous reported pulmonies from other microorganisms and the presence of starch hydrolyzed hydrolyzed product mainly maltotriose maltose and glucose indicate that the, that the enzymes belong to the pulmonies type 2 these enzymes after treatment degrade the starch and pulmonan through exocorrosal what we have already seen in uh, the scanning electron microscopic image the purified pollinase type 2 was immobilized using sodium alginate and was applied for the clarification of mosambe apple and mango juice to investigate its efficiency in fruit juice processing and fruit juice clarification there was a significant increase in yield clarity and reducing sugar as well as total soluble solids and total phenol content in apple mango and mosambi juice out of apple mango and mosambi juice has highest yield and clarity was recorded in mosambi juice moreover it also increased the lightness of the juice which may be due to the absence of enzymatic browning as per the literature survey this is the first report of juice clarification by using pulmonase type 2 produced by the endophytic fungi aspergillus flavors the result of the present study contribute the high yielded endophytic fun fungal strain to the family of pulmonase producing microorganisms as there were few reports on fungal strain producing pulmonase this strain uh, produced maximum yield with cheap substrate that is of wheat bran to reduce the production cost of pollinage. Further, this study was concluded with a great contribution to the juice processing industries by establishing the application of pollinage 2 for juice processing. This is a first report of pollinage in juice processing in juice processing. So far, there were no report on application of pollinage group of enzymes in enhancing the yield and quality of food juices. Thank you. Thank you, the MB Society and uh, um, Deshmukh sir for providing this platform to represent my PhD work. Thank you, ma'am. It was an excellent presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jay sir. Uh, now we are open for question and answer session. So anybody who has question, kindly unmute yourself, start the video, and you may ask the questions. And uh, meanwhile, ma'am, uh, please uh, type your email ID in the chat box. Yes, in the chat box, there are a few questions. Okay. I can read that. There are a few Kumar questions in chat box. Yes, yes. Uh, what mobile phase I have chosen for the um, 
let me to say how much time actually 90 minutes i have told we uh, the time we have optimized for, for the juice clarification like uh, the time is different for mango juice and uh, mosambi juice as well as for um, apple juice so uh, actually on the basis of properties the time is varies for the clarification at which time we have a good clarified juice and uh, sorry that I don't remember actually what the, uh, I think acetonitrile and um, this, uh, I am not able to remind uh, actually the uh, mobile fish I have taken for TLC, but uh, it is uh, uh, the mobile fish we have chosen is that they used for sugar uh, separation actually. Okay. What is the ammonium sulfate saturation? Uh -huh. Actually, the problem during the isolation or concentration of this enzyme, I have I have uh, told you that uh, I have not taken the ammonium sulfate saturation. Why? Because uh, when I go for the ammonium precipitation, at that time, uh, my enzyme is not able to uh, give its activity in the uh, DNS method. Means uh, I have to assay, I am assay this enzyme by using dinar to salicylic method. Now I determine the reducing sugar. But when I go for the precipitation of this enzyme by using ammonium sulfate, uh, it is not able to give uh, the reading uh, in dinar to salicylic method for the determination of reducing sugar. So I have Go, I have further go for the precipitation by using chilled acetone precipitation method. And the next question is, so, uh, is this enzyme used only in juice clarification? No, actually this enzyme is not used for the juice clarification. We have first time tried to use this enzyme for the juice processing and juice clarification. The this enzyme is used for the uh, production of resistant starch uh, and production of uh, glucose syrup, maltose syrup, this type of um, products, which have major application in food, food and pharma sector. And um, uh, so these are the applications of this enzyme. Main, en main application of this enzyme is to um, produce resistant starch. You can see it in literature. You can have this lots of application in production of glucose syrup, even low caloric beer production. This enzyme is usually used for the low caloric product, product production. Uh, which stage added in juice? Actually, the clarified um, means... Uh, uh, purified enzyme we have used for the juice clarification that's why as the amount of enzyme is very less we have so we have uh, entrapped in, in sodium alginate beads to uh, so that we can use it repeatedly and uh, i have already mentioned and the concentration means so we have used in terms of beads like 15 beads 35 beads for the clarification of juice this must question uh, in the unbearing chat box. Uh, Bindu, ma'am, I request you to type your email address in the chat box. So if anyone has any further questions, they can ask you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, someone has asked me my uh, Google, let me to type my email ID is. In this mail, uh, anybody can contact me. Perfect. Nice. Uh, yes, uh, I have tried in so much also, but uh, when I compare the so much fermentation and solid fermentation, uh, I have a better yield in uh, solid state fermentation. That's why we go for the solid state fermentation. And as well as my aim is to reduce the cost of production. So we, we our aim, main aim and focus is to utilize the agro waste for the production of these enzymes, this enzyme. And uh, someone uh, asked me about my Google Scholar ID. Um, just write Dr. Bindu Naik and uh, Graphic Era deemed to be university. You can have my all my research papers. And uh, someone asked me about the, any commercial available of Pulunis in market. Uh, actually, I don't have any idea, but, but I have purchased these enzymes from Sigma as well. And uh, some other companies are also there which provide the Pulunis commercially. But it is a little bit costly enzymes. 
so so that's why we target uh, most of the papers working on clone clone uh, cloning of bacillus to increase its yield and uh, to reduce the cost of production we have targeted the, um, to have a better medium conditions like uh, and the utilization of the agro waste for having a good production of uh, uh, pulmonies with less cost okay, these questions are there yeah, I think if anybody has uh, further questions, they can uh, just email you. And it was an excellent presentation. Thank you, Jay, sir. Uh, yeah, maybe a couple of um, companies or industries are there, but I have not checked that uh, anybody is producing these enzymes or not uh, industrially. Although these enzymes are industrial applications, so I think the suppliers are mainly from China. <laughs> For this ending. Nice Anything? brainstorm. Okay, so should I leave? Uh, yeah, I, uh, we will meet next Sunday. Uh, there will be another speaker next Sunday. And if you have any questions, so you can ask the ma'am. Uh, so thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Desmond. Thank you, sir. If anybody have any type of question, or um, yeah, you can ask me also. I have my mail ID. Perfect, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, 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 thank you,